<laughs> we are so privileged to have again i don't know how exactly to introduce him but let's together welcome all the way from the city of Ibadan to the rest of the world minister lawrence oh <laughs> you are welcome sir. thank you and let me say this for his brother is also here i'm sure maybe we'll do that by himself you are welcome sir thank you so much sir can we please celebrate pastor and his beautiful wife pastor abigail please celebrate pastor Tokwe. celebrate apostle mike please celebrate my brother they say um well technically biologically he is the firstborn we are in yoruba land and um there's a tradition that says that who is the eldest who is the eldest so please celebrate my younger brother <laughs> hallelujah please celebrate the pastorate thank you so much for standing by pastor hallelujah to jesus now i promised somebody that i will embarrass her online and uh, she's not here with me she really wanted to join me and um, i'm sure some people know who she is some people are doing, oh. so please darling if you're watching i love you celebrate my wife and my little baby before he starts crying praise god i came with two three people three of my wonderful you know sons and daughters in the lord talk by emmanuel and faith hallelujah to jesus glory to god the quality of um should i use the word attacks because we shouldn't give him any credit but the quality of feedbacks we get when we host meetings, sometimes I point her to the quality of breakthroughs people are going to experience. Yeah, I'm not going to go into details to some of the things that I have experienced in the last 24 hours as well. But um, I want to assure you that somebody's entire family is coming out. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we'll push as quickly as possible have a brief time i'll teach you a song so we can sing hallelujah and the song goes like this blessed be the god of david he's teaching my hands to war and my fingers to fight blessed be the god of david he's teaching my hands to war and my fingers to fight did you get it blessed be the god of david he's teaching my hands to war and my fingers to fight blessed be the god of david he's teaching my hands to war did you get it loud and out declare it blessed be is teaching my hands to war and my fingers to fight my fingers to fight blessed be blessed be the god of david is teaching my hands to war and now call a response my hands will war my fingers will fight my hands will war my fingers will fight raise your hands and declare my hands will war my fingers will fight blessed be god blessed be god declare it again my hands will war my fingers will fight my hands will war my fingers will fight my hands Blessed be God. Blessed Just the voice is declared now. Blessed be the God of David. He's teaching my hands to war and my feet. 
I want to hear you out loud. Blessed be. Blessed be the God of David. Is teaching my hands to walk. One more time. Shout it out now. Blessed be. Blessed be the God of David. Is teaching my hands to walk. Blessed be God. Now say it. My eyes we see. And my ears we hear. My heart will know. Blessed be God. My eyes will see. And my ears we hear. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. I'll give you three minutes. Please, you will pray in the spirit out loud and fast. In three minutes, lift up your voice and ride the Holy Ghost. Come on, loud and faster. Keep your eyes closed. Loud and faster. Loud and faster. Uh -huh. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, something is shifting here. Tena Daniel, Tena Kaela. Yeh Jeni Mye Kandu Ela, Deh Mye Mye Mende Le Mondia. Can you scream this out? My eyes will see. I like that. I like that. Can you shout it louder? My ears will hear. Declare it. My hands will handle. Shout it again. My eyes will see. My ears will hear. My hands will handle. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be God. Let's, let's be seated. Blessed be the God of David is teaching our hands to war. Please stay sensitive. The Lord gave me a word for, for you, ma. And that is for you, ma. Yes, you don't have to stand up. And um, you probably know it. And there's a, there's a breaker angel that is following your calling, your ministry. And that it's not just to open or activate atmospheres. Not many ministries have these angels following them. When you notice, and I'm sure Pastor is aware of this, I'm very sure of that. Pastor is a very, very great man of the spirit. Can we celebrate Pastor? And they are killer gardeners. If you've struggled in ministry, you know the, the privilege of having people who can break atmospheres in minutes. Hallelujah to Jesus. I tell people there's no hard ground. There is no what? There is no hard ground. Glory to Jesus. All right, joy 
this is one of my very favorite topics to talk about I sang that song because David declared that God taught his hands to war and his fingers to battle Psalm 144 verse 1 shows us that God taught him. It means everything we ever read about this man of God was a result of what heaven taught him. Together, one, two, go. So it shows us the secret of some of the very weird things that happened in his lifetime. Apart from the fact that he was taught, he also transferred that understanding to some certain rejects, depressed, good for nothing, abandoned people. You remember the story? He transferred the understanding to them. And these guys, by the teaching of David, began to do very strange things. That's not the subject for today. But I want to show you one of the things that David knew. Joy is not just the shouting and screaming when we ask us to rejoice. Joy is many things, and I'll try to run through quickly as much as I can. If you're sensitive, things are going to start taking place. When God servant I was a mic, mouse is podium, I would expect that the atmosphere will be set for some real high tension energy level experiences i'm believing god that people in your homes the power of god will reach them and they will be healed i know we said that amen as good christians but I remember 2018 where we rejoiced with understanding and shouted for joy in mina and the power of god traveled to a lady's home and a woman who has been on the bed for 18 years she felt a power hit her and she got up from the bed and called the daughter in school because the power of god can travel and as we stir it up this night it will travel to locations people you left home sick by the time you're leaving this meeting tonight you will hear that they are healed So what is joy? Number one, or before I begin, I should say that joy is like every other act of worship. It's a sacrifice like prayer, like fasting, like giving. I never saw it that way until I found Acts chapter 16, 23 to 20. Now again, I won't be able to read too many of all these scriptures. But well, if you give me from verse 27, okay, let's start from verse 25. Together, one to go. And at midnight, Paul and Silas did what? And then they did what? They sang praises to God. And the prisoners what? Heard them. Next verse. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Now it seemed because this was not what happened to Peter. In Peter's case, the church prayed, angel appeared, took him out of prison, and so on and so forth. When you read further down, it looks like Paul and Silas knew what they were doing. It seemed like they knew how to do it. Because by the time they had been set free, they didn't seem to want to escape. The prisoner felt they would have escaped. If that happens in Nigeria, I'm sure you know. Nobody will be a good prisoner and stay back. Yes or no? Everybody who sees that the door has opened runs out. Paul and Silas sat down. It seemed as so though they knew a code that when you hit it, something is going to be triggered. And literally, even nature will respond. Psalms 27 verse 6. Psalms chapter 27 verse 6. 
Together one to go, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in the tabernacle what? And I will do what? I will sing, yeah, I will sing praise unto the Lord. So you see what they did? They prayed, which was a sacrifice, right? But there is one more we don't see as a sacrifice. We see it as just a random act that we do in church. But it is a sacrifice. You know joy is a sacrifice when you're going through pain. You know joy is truly a sacrifice when this life is not treating you well. I remember my dad asking me one day, why don't you dance? This is many years ago while I was still on campus. Why don't you dance when you leave people in praise and worship? You know, I thought, you know, <laughs> as praise and worship leaders, we're supposed to lead you. So we're supposed to look like where you are going. We're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be dancing. If I'm not dancing and rejoicing, I don't expect you to, right? Yes or no now? So I will stand like this. For example, maybe I'm singing the song I just laid now. My eyes will see. My ears will hear. My heart will touch. Blessed be God. Now do that. One day daddy said, what exactly is going on? What are you doing? And it came out of my heart as if a demon spoke out of me. I said, because there's nothing to dance about. He was shocked. It's a good Christian child. Brought up in the house of God. Fun fact. One of my names is evangelist. Not title. Names. One of his names is pastor. Read any of my father's books. You'll see it there. My first son, God's will, pastor, Lawrence, evangelist. He didn't try for us. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. So it's difficult to give that sacrifice when all is not well. When all is well, it's simple. It's easy to be grateful when you've been given something. How do I tell you thank you for what you have not done? And yet, every prayer is supposed to end with thanksgiving. Yes or no? Yes, All prayer with thanksgiving. Me, T. Lee, where am I thanking him? That's why it's a sacrifice. Hallelujah to Jesus. Quickly, another point I want you to please note is that joy is in a location. Joy has a location. I like this one. See it like your radio. Some of us have not listened to radio in a while. But see it like a radio device. When you're looking for which channel? Call a channel for me, please. Huh? I would as if we don't hear radio. 96.9. All right. So as you are tuning, when you get to 95.5, you might begin to pick signals from 96.5, but you will notice there's still distortion. Until you get to 96.5, suddenly, things begin to happen. Your favorite song is playing. Probably a playlist, if it's on Sunday, when you're playing Christian music in the morning. You begin to enjoy that station because in that location, is the value that you're looking for, right? In the presence of God is fullness of joy. Meaning, in the presence of joy is God. If I get to God and I find joy, if I get to heaven and what I find is joy, and all I need to create heaven on earth is what? Is joy. It is that simple. Psalm 16, verse 11. This is one of the things God taught David. Psalm 16, verse 11. Together, want to go. That will show me what? The paths of life. So life has pathways. Another word for life, like I like to put it, is ah, 
is energy, is power, is virtue. One of the ways to rout power is joy. So David was saying, you will show me what? The paths of life. And what was the path? In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So what is at the right hand of joy? Come on, are we together? Look at it, look at it. In thy presence is fullness of what? Of joy. And at thy right hand is what? So where you find joy, who is there? What's at the right hand of God? What's at the right hand of joy? Anywhere you find joy, you find what? Pleasures. So if you are trying to get to God and it seems like there's a problem, if you can get to joy, you will get to God. Because joy is where God dwells. The atmosphere for God's, would I say, existence or manifest presence, sorry, is joy. So you, are, you can't be surprised if you notice that in the presence of sorrow and sadness, demons will do all their right. And what's at their right hand? What's at the right hand? Pain and sickness forevermore. When you get this, you won't be playing around depression. Some of us are proud of our depression. Some of us are happy that we are depressed. I didn't even know it was depression until two years. When the problem was finally over and I was feeling lighter. I won't go into details. And my president that year said, I asked him, I said, why am I feeling happy today? I'm feeling as if I'm lighter. I just got through an issue for about two years. And he said, ah. My brother, you were depressed. I said, depression. That's depression. Like a weight I'm carrying for two straight years. Doing church and depressed. Singing and depressed. Preaching and depressed. Laughing and greeting people. And what? depressed living depressed for two straight years not wanting anyone to be around me some of those that were trying for us to mentor them suffered a lot what do you want there was no reason for joy some of us have become our second nature we are happy about it in that atmosphere sickness can latch on a person before you know it, you're talking about lump in the breast, this on this body, that on the that, and so on and so forth. Because you open yourself up to things that you do not desire. In the atmosphere of joy, who is there? So in the atmosphere of sorrow, what is there? So I've said it's like a location, it's like a frequency that you tune to. If you are expecting a particular kind of result, then tune to joy. Joy is not something for the sanguine. It's not something for the jovial. I'm not that kind of person. Madam, it's not an option. Daddy, it is a command. Philippians chapter 4 it's for your own good. If you are shy about your joy, you laugh when you see yourself, you know, in your natural state. And do it alone. As often as possible, let that frequency come out of your spirit. It will preserve your body. It will preserve your life. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. One to go. And again I say rejoice. Now give us Nehemiah chapter 2, 1 to 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. From verse 1 to verse 2. Together, let's look at this. One to go. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes, the king, that what? Wine was before him, 
and I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now what? This is the presence of an earthly king. In his life, he has never been what? Sad. Verse 2. So the king said to me, Why is thy countenance sad? So don't tell me that you are happy inside, but your outside is just how your face is. That's how God made you. Can I change my face? Tell your neighbor, try. <laughs> so sorrow can be seen on the countenance, right? So can joy. Now, what touched me in this scripture is that the king did not ask him if he was sick. Look at that scripture. It says, Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad? Seeing thou art not sick. It's as though there is nobody that can be sick here. All conditions are right. So I'm not asking if you are sick. You can't be sick. So why are you sad? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was so afraid. Why? In these times, kings don't ask too many questions. They can cut your neck for not laughing. They are not presidents or governors. Why are you frowning? Kill him. It's funny how an earthly king took the appearance of those around him seriously. What do you want my visitors to say about me? Imagine going to visit your, your, for your friend or your you know, loved one. And you see the children crying. You know, tap on what's wrong. You say, I'm not eating since morning. Who bears the shame, the child or the mother? What do you want my people to think when they come into the kingdom and they see that my people are not well taken care of? If an earthly king could reason like that, how much more your father, the king of kings? Declare God has something to gain. Declare God has something to gain. Say it again. God has something to gain. He has something to gain from your joy. So it's not just saying rejoice because rejoicing is a system of routing things in the spirit in the kingdom he actually is giving you reasons that's why he said ask that your joy may be what full as simple as what i just said sounds i know this is a bible believing church and you've been well taught but you will not believe how many believers don't believe god wants them happy Because of how we experience life growing up, it's difficult to believe that God can just answer all those prayers right now. So our praying has gotten into religion. We pray so it won't be like we didn't pray. So when they ask us, have you prayed? I've prayed. Have you fasted? Ah. Ask your neighbor, have you rejoiced? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15 verse 13, just in case you're saying, Sir, this is how I am. I don't think I want to change it. Chapter 15 verse 33. Of verse 13, sorry. Together want to go. A merry heart. You may get a cheerful countenance. Or by sorrow of heart, the spirit is broke. Now, why is that important? 18 verse 14. Want to go? The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit who can bear? So when you don't give yourself to joy, something happens to your spirit. 
It is that spirit that sustains your body. So, 17 verse 22 now, please. You, this now makes sense, right? Together, want to go. A merry heart, do a good like medicine, but a broken spirit, dry it up the bones. There are people who have just gotten a mistaken report that they had cancer and they started drying up. You have some stories, right? No cancer in the body. As they got the report, all the symptoms started showing up. You begin to wonder, are you sure as you go for tests? Because what I don't know cannot kill me. Some are resolved to that, right? I was fine before I went. When I go there, they say I cannot leave the hospital. I should lie there immediately. It's an emergency. Ah! I walk with my doctor. You saw me. I entered with my two legs. All was well. The spirit of a man can sustain him. Some of you have experienced this in fasting. Once you are done with the stretch of all the stress, and all of a sudden your body breaks down. Have you experienced that before? Because as you set your heart to a combat of saying, the spirit has capacity to sustain and preserve this body. And one of the things that breaks that spirit is what? Is sorrow. Is sorrow. Is sorrow. Is sorrow. Joy is your weapon. Joy is a power. I'm going somewhere. Glory to Jesus. Joel 1 verse 12. Let's see that again. Just by way of emphasis. Joel 1 verse 12. Joel chapter 1 verse 12. Together want to go. And the vine is dried up. And the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree. The palm tree also. And the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are with that. Why? 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 So barrenness is a product of lack of joy lack of joy can result in barrenness of life you see all manner of trees shutting down and the reason is because joy started is shutting down sometimes we don't trace it to that because we just see joy as shouting and truly Many times that's what it has been reduced to in church. But joy is as serious as prayer. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I will talk about being intentional because God used it to change my life 2012. I have seen the secret to many meetings and people are not shifting. We had the move of God on campus and some of the strangest things, I'm not sure I can share here, took place. As strange as by locations, as strange as all you can imagine. And one of the major things that powered us every single day as we're charging 12 hours every night was joy. Joy. You can't give yourself to joy and not see really, really strange things show up in your life. That atmosphere makes it possible for his manifest presence to not just come or dwell god is everywhere we're aware of that but his manifest presence is not everywhere joy ensures that manifest presence glory to jesus habakkuk two three more and then we are done habakkuk chapter three from verse 17 to 19 Where's the time, please? Oh, wow. Habakkuk 3, 17. Together, one, two, go. So you see the same scenario, right? You see the same scenario, right? Because many times we think that, Pastor, you don't understand what is going on in my life. You see that truly this is the solution. Together, again, one, to go. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall the fruit be in the vines, 
The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stores. Did you see that? So we are not rejoicing because all is well. People think that's why we rejoice. We rejoice so all will be what? Well. This changed my life. We don't wait for conditions to be right to rejoice. We rejoice whether it's right, whether it's not right, until it's right. It's just like prayer. We don't wait until we feel like praying until we pray. We pray when we feel like praying. We pray when we don't feel like praying. And we pray until we feel like praying. First Samuel chapter 30, as we begin to draw to a close. First Samuel chapter 30. He's teaching my hands to war and my fingers. And this is the story of David. We see the fact that, you know, he went to battle, came back, verse 2. You know, the city had been burned down. All his wives, children taken away. All those mighty men. Remember those mighty men? Remember those mighty men? Those mad guys. Those people that will carry a javelin, carry a spear, carry the jawbone. You think Samson was a strong man until you read about the mighty men of David. Kai. You almost think it's just sounding poetic. How can a man jump over a wall? By my God, I run through a troop. It sounds poetic, right? Have you stopped to think that it was literal? And the fact that he didn't say I jump over a fence. He jumped over a wall. Have you seen walls in movies? Have you seen what a wall is? Is he a normal person that jumps over? Can you even jump over a fence? He didn't say climb. I do what? I jump. I run through a troop. He said, by my hands, a bow of steel is broken. That's a mad person. How did he get such a strength? You think something was strong? He used joy to rout power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Was not a normal person. But you see, you know, this day he was defeated. It seemed like he was messed up. This was his most down moment. And uh, let's just keep, let's just run. Let's just keep running down. Please go back. For Samuel 30. Verse 5. So his two wives were taken away. And so on and so forth. Verse 6. Together, one to go. And David was greatly distressed. For the people did what? It's funny that they didn't want to cut his neck, fight him. They want stone. One of the first things David must have taught his men was how to do what? How to throw stone. Naturally, Israel was a stony nation. As a nation, yes or no? Everything is stone. Any law you break, you do what? Stone your destiny. Now, David had an anointing to stone, a specific one. So, I can imagine the first lesson, how to kill a giant, right? Everyone, stone. And this day, the Bible says they began to speak. I mean, you just stone the person. Instead of talking about it, I can imagine the conversation. Oh, God, you will stone his leg. I will stone his left eye. You... You will stone his right hand. Why was this happening? Because these great and mighty men were weeping. If you read from verse, I think verse 4 or so, the Bible says they wept until there was no more strength in them to weep. There are women, you say maybe they're emotional, right? These were mighty men. You know their track record, right? If you see such a man weeping, won't you cry? Won't you run? Who beat this man that is crying like this? And you read on, and then you see what happened in verse 7. Verse 7. And David said to Abiathar the priest, 
I be like son. I pray they bring me hither the effort. And I better brought hither the effort to David, verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? But before all this happened, David did something. Verse 6. The last statement, can we shout together? But David want to go. And there was nobody to encourage David here. Those to encourage him were thinking of doing what? Stoning him. He was alone. Just in case you're thinking, somebody must always be there for you. They didn't call me in my time of trouble. David did not have the Holy Ghost inside him like you do. He didn't speak in tongues. Are you getting what I'm saying? The greatest of prophets, John the Baptist, is not like you. You are greater than the greatest of prophets. Let's assume you are the least in the kingdom. I mean, who is the least here? Because you are not even the least, Abby. We will not agree with the least, Abby. So we assume you are not the least. So even if you were the least, you are still greater than who? So you are greater than David. If he did it, you can do it. David began to record this. I imagine how he did it. He sat himself down and said, David, do. Ah, ah. No, be you. Was it not you when the entire army of Israel were running away from Goliath? Was it not you that charged that team, carry stone, stone the middle of his head? And he fell down and died. You told him before the time you will cut his head, you will feed his body to the birds, and you did it. You they asked for 100 Philistine for skin. How many did you give them? 200. Oh, the change. You, David, look at the mighty men that you have raised. God has been with you all these years. What's wrong with you, David? So one of the secrets to ensure you will stay joyful is to remember. Tell someone by your side, remember. Remember, we forget too quickly. I'll do a very quick experiment. Anybody here, you have a problem. I want to show you that you have a reason to rejoice. Anybody, you have a problem, you want to prove to me your problem is big. Anybody, raise your hand. Anybody, don't be shy. Anybody, anybody, quickly, quickly. You have a problem. Can you shout it from there? Shout your problem. Please. Okay, you want me to solve it? No, no, no. Don't worry, tomorrow we'll push some things. Hallelujah. Quickly, can you shout it from there? Okay, you don't want anybody to hear. Anybody, I just want to do an experiment quickly, please. All right. One guy in Abuja, I was doing this experiment and he stood up and he said, I have a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, my younger sister is at home now, mad. And so I asked the people, I said, should we solve this problem now? Do you believe God can solve this problem? Because sometimes we pray, we don't believe. We just finished praying 12 hours. Power is generated, yes or no? So I said, can we solve this problem now? He said, yes. He said, call the girl and declare that she's healed. He called her immediately, she was healed. God is not just asking you to rejoice. He is going to give you reasons in this conference. Madam, please expect a miracle. Any problem, please. Let me just give that, that example. All right. School fees, I like that one. What level? What level is school? Huh? KG1. <laughs> I was shocked to my marrows. Quickly, let me show you a testimony in that. She was born, did not die at birth. Yes or no? Can we celebrate God for that? <laughs> to be doing HND1, I believe that you have crossed from nursery school to primary school, right? And you even crossed to secondary school. Now you want to enter... So you paid school fees every single year from nursery school to primary school to secondary school and you finish. Can we celebrate Jesus for that? 
what the spirit of reincarnation will do is to make her forget all that God has done for about 18, 20 years. And she can say she's not doing church again because of HND1. But if you will tune yourself to the frequency of joy and rejoice always, it will surprise you how God will deliver to you the things that your heart desires. Rise up on your feet everywhere. We want to give the sacrifice of joy in about two minutes and I'm out of here. Are we ready? Like I said, be intentional. As you're intentionally praying in the Spirit, be intentionally giving your joy. And as you're shouting, be thoughtful with it. Start to see all His goodness. Can you see it? Can you see His goodness? Can you see His goodness? Release your joy! many options better options God just decided to pick you out and so I'm grateful for the opportunity thank you very much sir I want to salute you I want to salute every minister in the house this evening thank you for coming to share fellowship God bless you richly I pray that the Lord will speak to us even tonight in the name of Jesus and so when God's servant said he didn't know the direction Pastor Lawrence would take. I was praying that he would sing. But uh, he came up and exhausted all the scriptures on joy. So I will tell you stories. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Please celebrate Evangelist Lawrence and Pastor Coswell. Such a blessing. Thank you so much. If you are ready tonight, lift your hands toward heaven and talk to the Lord. From the depths of your heart just whisper something to the lord and talk to him now kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne you read you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kado, Kado, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kado, Kado, you are mighty on your throne. tonight and take all the glory in Jesus precious name amen you may be seated God bless you
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll just share briefly. Okay. I'll just share briefly tonight and then trust God to walk out the protocol of joy. I know teachers have come, great teachers will yet come, that will take time to do a thorough exegesis. So I want to tonight trust the Lord to walk out something that happens when joy is in the atmosphere. And so I will not do so much of teaching. We've received the word already. But just to usher us into the possibilities that we'll be trusting God for tonight. Meanwhile, this man must chant this night. <laughs> no matter how we do it, he must chant this night. <laughs> Thank God for the word. But the chanting must come in abundance. Praise the Lord. I want to begin tonight from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, in order to give perspective to the subject of consideration. This piece of architecture called man is a product of very deep divine intelligence. Most times, man or men should actually sit down and be taught what man is. You know, when David began to gaze into the vistas of the heavens, one of the things that happened to him was a realization of how strange this being that God took time in the studios of eternity to factor out of wisdom what he is about and he screamed and he said what is man that thou art mindful of him as a prophet he had access to the realms divine and he must have interacted with certain celestial beings you know when you are prophetic one of the edge you have is sight and so when a prophet begins to wonder having looked at the plethora of creations and he did not pick out an archangel because when you look upon the archangel they are strange when you see michael he's a weapon of war every dimension of his framework reveals power and strength we have access into scriptures and a little was told us about lucifer the son of the morning before he fell and the glory that he carried he beamed like the sun they said that he they factored into him were instruments of music. You can find keyboard, string instruments, drum instrument, wind instrument. So the creatures of heaven are strange. In fact, Revelation chapter 4 gave us another sight. And he began to talk to us about the four living creatures that had the face of a lion, the face of an eagle, the face of an ox, and the face of a man. So they are so many terrible beings in heaven and for david not to wonder at any of these creatures rather coming down to say what is man i saw the angelic realm i considered their ranks from the very heights of zion but what i saw about man i can't explain it so what is man that you are mindful of him and you are not just mindful of him you decided to deck him with glory and honor why didn't you put your majesty upon the archangels why did you choose man that looked vulnerable what is this being so if you don't take time to study what man is when spiritual realities are altered you will take it as face value when god talks about man it's deep you know when he created the world in genesis chapter one he said god said he was just talking and creating but when he wanted to create man the community of the godhead had to converge again you know the holy ghost can be moving upon the face of the earth the father can sit on the throne the world will be going forth but for man to be created let's gather together there is a wisdom that we must cook out of the depth divine that has never been seen let us make man in our own image after 
our likeness so man does not look like any being that's why even the angels look upon man with with our because when man is walking in his true element the only thing you should see is God I know we take joy in the fact that we look like Yorubas they say Yorubas have this shape they are beautiful that's that's mundane they say Igbos they are fair so when you are an Igbo person it's natural that you will there will be some glisters that's mundane the true essence of man is to mirror God and so when man is not functioning in that capacity he has not entered this element and in the same vein when God begins to talk about a reality that borders on man you need to take time to study it to understand it don't take it by face value when we say joy you can't understand joy until you understand man Ali of life walking in him at the same time there's no creature there are no creatures in any realm that have three order of life walking in them at the same time only man functions like that when you study the way man was built in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 when he said let us make man there was a spiritual life that God designed to power the spirit of man and then in Genesis 2 7 when he created man from the dust there was another life that he injected into the flesh and so in Leviticus 17 verse 11 he said the life of the flesh is in the blood and after he sculpted the earth and put the spirit in him he said he breathed into the man the bread of life and the man became a living soul so there is a life that powers the body there is a life that powers the soul and there is another life that powers the spirit so when a man is walking three order of life is moving at the same time you can't understand that creature until revelation is given to you you don't know who you are that's why a demon can come to your window at night when you know who you are you will laugh get behind me satan i am fearfully and wonderfully made if I start like this <laughs> let's calm down God bless you thank you so much I'm sorry I'm sorry I sometimes I think I'm still in the cave you know we have come out of the cave we need to be polite <laughs> God bless you please <laughs> oh my god something we fall you can't go back the way you came it's not possible unless what we are saying is story if this is reality you can't go back the way you came there are dimensions of favor that we mantle some of you just by reason of revelation you will go out and you will carry energy dimensions of energy that in the name of jesus God bless you please sit down because 
you carry three order of life every reality you interact with functions at different planes i'm trying to define joy you see there is a dimension of ventilation that the body senses when something good happens to your body the life of that flesh ventilates that ventilation that comes from your body when something good happens to you is called pleasure that's the lowest experience in this framework called man so when you are in an air-conditioned room you you feel good because it's interacting with your body there is no way the air condition can touch your spirit so pleasure functions at the fleshly realm if all you feel and experience is pleasure as beautiful as it is in the realm where it matters you are called a dead man that's why in first timothy chapter 5 verse 6 it says he that lived for pleasure is dead while he walketh that means only the fleshly life is interacting with reality and when only the fleshly life interacts with reality no matter how potent it is in the realms divine you are dead and then there's another ventilation that the soulish life experiences this one is based on circumstances when you hear that somebody gifted you a car you start celebrating if that car develops a fault two weeks later you feel sad so there is a dimension that can be regulated by circumstances we call that happiness is of the soul pleasure is of the body happiness is of the soul pleasure is regulated by interactions with flesh happiness is regulated by the the multiple vicissitudes of life if it is good you release a ventilation that makes you excited if it is bad you release another ventilation that makes you feel bad so pleasure and happiness they fluctuate a believer cannot function from that economy when a believer lives by pleasure it means he's, re he's, he's walking only at the lowest realm of life if a believer functions by happiness he's living at a higher realm but that realm is still disadvantaged because when the devil wants to frustrate his existence he begins to touch the things around him but there is a realm where circumstances cannot manipulate joy is the ventilation of the spirit life it is not regulated by circumstances so even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil there is nothing that happens that can stagger you you are like mount zion that cannot be moved because you are spending from an economy that is eternal oh. Please be seated. When we talk about the economy of joy, we are talking about an outflow of the spirit life because of the interactions that happen in the spirit. And so in Luke 146 when the word of the lord came to mary she said my soul doth magnify the lord because my spirit hath." what the soul is feeling now is a product of what has happened in the spirit in the past my soul doth magnify the lord because my spirit hath rejoiced in the god of my salvation so joy is an economy of the spirit when your spirit ventilates what you call it is joy that's why circumstances can't bend it that's why situations can alter it you can go through the worst situations in life but it doesn't show who are you because you are living from a realm deeper than time you are living from a dimension that things cannot affect so joy is a very spiritual commodity and that's why only few have it but tonight many people will migrate from pleasure migrate from happiness and they'll begin to walk at the realms of joy praise the lord because joy is of the spirit 
it cannot be acquired from anything but God the only source of joy is God and so there are two things to glean from there number one is that joy can change when a man steps into the frequency of joy nothing can change him he will walk and take advantage of everything joy supplies every day every time his life becomes a definition of proverbs 4 18 the path of the just is as a shiny light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day because the god that sources you joy he changeth not and because he changeth not every good and perfect thing happening to you cannot change you can use joy to manage your ecosystem when things go wrong you can use joy to correct it when things are right you can use joy to sustain it so joy becomes much more than excitement joy becomes a weapon in the spirit you know my friend was quoting from psalm 16 verse 11 he said you will show me the path of life for in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand pleasures forevermore in thy presence it's only in the presence that you can find joy in first john chapter 1 from verse 1 he said that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life he said for the life was in the father but was made manifest and we have seen him he said that eternal life that was with the father from the beginning is what we are bringing to you that you may have fellowship with us he said these things in verse 4 we have written unto you that your joy may be full because joy comes from the lord it comes from the lord so if a man does not have a relationship with god he can't have joy because joy is not circumstantial joy is a product of intimacy with the spirit of joy it's a product of intimacy with god so when we teach in a messy conference like this one of the things we emphasize will be intimacy and tomorrow i will talk about intimacy so that people will make joy their habitation because when a man dwells in the realm of god one thing that flows with him he is unending joy that's why i said there's a river that flows from the throne he said the tributaries make it glad the cities of god when you find people not walking in the economy of joy they have no relationship with god joy is not a story you tell people it's a summon to the place of intimacy because joy flows from abba when the devil wants to destroy you he disconnects you from god because he knows when you are disconnected you begin to vasculate and as your life begins to fluctuate you become a victim when the devil wants to destroy you he tries to attack your joy and the way he does it is to disconnect you from the source of joy and so many don't know that their greatest asset on earth is not a car their greatest asset on earth are not the nations they have traveled to you know there's so much poverty mentality in the world today that people derive self-esteem from places they've been to meanwhile why you are celebrating that you have come to the united kingdom that same morning somebody came from the third heaven you labor night and day to receive a visa to Tulsa, Oklahoma and then from the plane you are taking selfies as you learn you go to the statue of liberty so they will know that this one you went there after the harassment at the embassy somebody else doesn't need a visa he just enters his bedroom Kaka, Regibata Kubada, Ediato de Veven de Zusa, Ragabatida and Dakala, Robekida, and suddenly he will say, I was in the eye called Patmos, and I heard a sound from heaven, and he said, Come up, Hida. While you are celebrating Statue of Liberty, 
somebody else heard a voice and where he went he said i am alpha omega i am the one who was who is and who is to come i was dead but now i live forevermore the life of the believer is an economy that functions in the presence and so before you pride yourself with earthly things make sure you have journeyed deep in the spirit because that's where your security is it's a body it's a it's a body when a man finds joy one of the ways to vet it is his stability in circumstances it's not just when he's laughing you know Paul said I have learned how to abound and to abase I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me they are those are two dimensions of the workings of joy the first is stability the second is the power to do all things if you can if you can keep your state in abundance and in lack because your economy streams from your spirit it means you have attained stability in life and if you are able to get there then the second thing that happens naturally is that you can do all things because you are walking by another strength through christ which strengthens me the energy that powers you becomes the energy of the divine you know when you see christians going through crisis sometimes the cure is simple but they will not take it if you build a relationship with god sufficient for joy to flow out you will be amazed you will not remember problems that's when you will know that the healing anointing is for babes because healing is the children's bread there's an economy you enter that you don't need healing you walk in divine life you walk in divine health every day it pumps out of your spirit even while you are sleeping activities are going on in your spirit so when you go to rest god comes and rejuvenates your structure you wake up every day you are new there's a frequency you tap into you'll discover that word of knowledge is not for everybody it's for those who have not been able to travel so they can't see from the crystals of glass they need a voice to direct them on earth most of the things jesus provided the church is to help babes grow when we grow we will stop delivering services because there's a realm you enter where demons don't exist and one of the ways to attain those possibilities is through the economy of joy it looks simple but it's a testimony of where you live from it's a testimony of the reality of your realm so it's not just about being moody today and excited tomorrow it's about where you are standing in your walk with God because joy is a place joy is a state and joy is a ventilation of a man that functions in the presence He was reading the scripture, Habakkuk 3.17. This is the testimony of a farmer. All he knows is farming. All he, he does, all he lives off is farming. And then suddenly, Habakkuk 3.17, it looks as if his own natural reality was under attack. You know, when the devil wants to check your stability, what he does is that he attacks your circumstances. Meanwhile, the devil can attack your circumstances if you don't know how to ensure it. Because there's a technology in the spirit of ensuring everything that pertains to you. You know, when they say tight, people say, hey, they want to take our money. They don't know his spiritual intelligence. That when Abraham gave a tithe of all, 
It was an insurance policy. That's why Abraham can dare carry 318 men to fight four kings. You don't do that unless you are mad. But if you know that the lives and the resources that belong to you are insured, you can carry a stone and go to war. Why others are, are looking for earthly fraternity? You know that you are one man, but you are many people. You know, when Abraham wanted to go to war, the Bible said Abraham divided himself. What technology is that? How can one man become many men? Because there are mysteries that they tap into. They don't walk from their flesh. They have seen the spirit that architect, that formed the engineering of the earth realm. Anything they do, work. But that's not my teaching tonight. Here is a man who is a farmer. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. He said, the labor of the olive shall fail. The field shall not yield meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no head in the store. What else are you left with? Tell somebody, I'm left with joy. When it looks as if there is nothing else, there is joy else. Because if joy is there, every other thing can be restored. They say, ah, the bank account is depleted. Your health is under attack. Ah, you are finished. We don't know how to finish. Because him that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. So even though the earthly things are gone, I am connected to a source. And that source is a river. That's why he said out of their bellies, he didn't say shall flow money. He said shall flow rivers of living water. So long as there is joy, everything can be restored this man knew he said yet yet that means the things happening is not a lie it's not a myth it's true he said yet i will rejoice in the lord and i will joy why is he joying because when he joys the salvation dimension of god is activated there are many dimensions in god i've taught this before because before God became creator, God was many things. God did not begin with creation. He predates creation. He is existence. Creation is just one of the ways God wants to be creative. You know, when men want to relax, they play cricket. When men want to relax, they play football. They go to gymna gymnasium and dance. When a God wants to relax, because he's a being of power, one of the ways he relaxes is by creating. He said, let the stars appear. Let the galaxies appear, and then everything he says happens. That's how a God plays. Did you not read? In the book of Revelation 4, it said, All things were created for thy pleasure. So creation is the way God plays. When he stood, he said, Let the stars appear. He appeared. He felt good. The way you, you are watching Messi, he scores a goal and you, you are excited. A God can't be excited with football. Football is too mundane. When a God wants to be excited, he commands Orion. He commands Arcturus. He commands Mazarot. He summons the thunder and they respond to him. Because he's a being of power. That's why he's called Elohim. The Almighty. <laughs> So, that farmer knew, because he's a prophet, that the way to activate out of the multiple dimensions of God, the way to activate salvation is to join the Lord. So when things are going wrong, I can activate a dimension that I don't need. But in order to sensitively activate salvation, the only way to out of the myriad of dimensions in God to activate salvation is to join. That's why in Acts chapter 16 from verse 27, when they threw them in prison, there were many things they could do. They didn't read the Bible. They didn't meditate on scripture. The Bible said they prayed and they sang. Because when a man begins to rejoice, salvation is a dimension that must be activated. So what the devil does to you is that he keeps you gloomy. And then you say, 
this thing is growing the size is increasing you don't know salvation you stand up you say i've applied for the job for five years it's not working my brother what you need to do is to lock the door and enter your room and when you enter your room you play the music and what you are doing is hey, hey, hey. People look at you, they'll say, Wait, oh, the guy is mad. What is happening? He's activating a code. It's a code. It's a code. Because joy provokes salvation. Abraham was barren. He prayed from 75 to 99. Nothing was working. He fasted. Nothing was working. He gave tight. Nothing was working. He now knew there's a way to compare salvation. And so the Bible said in Romans 4 18 that who against hope believed in hope that he would be the father of many nations. And he said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith. What did he do? Giving thanks to God. The child has not come, but I know there is a salvation dimension that giving me a child is a choice place to him. So all I need to do is to just joy, joy. And as he rejoiced, suddenly the barren womb of Sarah, life entered there. Suddenly the important Abraham life entered there and what could not happen from 75 to 99 all of a sudden in one year the result of one year was greater than the result of 24 years i know you have looked for job for 10 years i know you have looked for a child for 10 years but when was the last time you danced about the matter you are invoking and superimposing the spiritual dimension over the natural Everybody, look, look, see what the Lord has done for me. Everybody, look, look, see what the Lord has done for me.
said put it on the board let them read it some things are stronger than just a teaching you have to experience it you say for ye shall go out with joy and be led forth by peace and suddenly he said and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing that thing that was a challenge will become the basis for your testimony but they said you have to go out you have to go out with joy you have to go out with joy and so you want to stir joy in your spirit you want to stir joy at the kako paratuate eswada varakida shotanati azoka tepa prakadadagubas let the rivers begin to flow let the rivers begin to flow Shaka 
And so we provoke the waters of the spirit. We provoke it.
Thank you, Father. Please, that's a city. The angels are about to begin to take things from people's bodies. Don't miss this moment. I beg you. Don't miss this moment. This is the hour. Bones are being straightened. Broken bones. Dislocated bones. Bone disalignments. Bone weakness. Tendons. Ligaments. Are receiving strength. Somebody's neck bone is being readjusted right now. Somebody is receiving strength in your ligament. You have had ligament disorder, excruciating pains that will not end. Right now, the Lord is fixing it. Growths are living. I command growths in the body, growths in the breast, growths in the cheek, in any part of the body. Right now, out of their bodies. Come out. Come out. Demonic implantations have been taken out. Eyes begin to see. I command blindness be gone. Deafness be gone. Deafness be gone. Two persons are being healed of heart condition. Heart palpitation. One of them is wearing a red shirt. I release life by the spirit. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Somebody towards my left. Your collarbone has just been healed. There's been a pain. You couldn't lift your hands. Lift that hand up. You have just been healed. You have just been healed. In the name of Jesus, I speak to your bodies. Receive healing now. Receive healing now. still in God's presence just be still just play only the keyboard for me gently please be still and stay focused if you are distracted close your eyes the reason we teach is to bring men into the experience it's not just for the intelligence of biblical exegesis the word of God has already come forth I came to bring you the dimension. Please stay focused. Things are leaving people's bodies now. A growth just left a lady, your throat. There's been this pain and it's a growth inside your throat. You've not been able to swallow. It has just been taken. Somebody towards the left there, close to that air condition. You couldn't lift your hands. You had a collar dislocation. It's like it's a very it's a dislocation. You're going to lift your hand. Lift it now. You'll just discover you have been healed. Things are leaving people's bodies now. I command eyes to see. I command ears to hear. Doors of favor are opening for people. Doors of favor. Stagnations of many years are being cancelled right now. Stagnations. Stagnations are being cancelled are being cancelled are being cancelled i'm seeing somebody wearing something reddish you had a condition with your heart you have just been healed like a heart palpitation and sometimes it comes with so much pains you literally can't breathe sometimes the lord just touched you you have just been healed just lift your hands under that atmosphere and receive and receive go ahead and suck it in receive receive growths are leaving people's bodies breast armpits growths are going 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 I'm, I, I just, it just dropped in my spirit. Somebody this way, you've had this issue. I don't know. You can't sit down. I don't know if it's a groat or a pie or something. Somebody from around here. God just, I just saw a quick snap in the spirit that somebody who is having a challenge sitting, the Lord just touched. Daddy, you are the one. You, you've just been healed. You, you can confirm that now. Please don't be distracted, please. I, I, I deliberately didn't want to flow like this so we don't break the atmosphere. Try to sit down. You discover that you have been made whole. Just receive under this atmosphere. Just receive. Just receive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. I'm seeing somebody from the around 10, 11 row to us on this lane. It looks like you have a challenge with your neck. You couldn't turn. It looks like, I don't know if it's a dislocation of some sort, but I just saw a quick trance. Somebody has just been healed. It's a neck condition. Somewhere there. I don't know. Is there anybody like that? Can you just wave at me? You have just been healed. Turn your neck. You discover you have been healed. Brother on the white. You have just been healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. We are going to take some testimonies. And pardon me, I will teach tomorrow morning. The word has already come forth. I just wanted to stir you so you receive what the word brought for us. There are many persons who are already healed. But we are just going to dance and praise the Lord for a few minutes. And then we'll take a few testimony and I make some declarations and then we go back. Is that okay tonight? Who is the best praise leader? Who is the best praise leader? An anointed one. Come. Hear me. I was in Mubi. And I just told them to dance. It was casual like this. You know, people don't respond until they hear one testimony. They hear another testimony then they start closing their eyes there are moments in the spirit and there are there are dimensions that are released with prophetic instruction a woman was healed of cancer of the breast five years every other person began to pray in tongues i said i didn't say pray in tongues we only say dance and they didn't dance because they were stereotyped they felt they have to pray and pray in a certain way for certain things to happen god said dance we are trying to practicalize what we are hearing. So we don't hear many teachings and then we add it on our archive. And we don't experience it. Praise the Lord. And so we are going to dance now. Dance violently. Forget that situation. As you are dancing, you'll be shocked. Some of you, your miracle is hanging on you now. As you begin to dance, you'll be amazed. Help us now for five minutes. How God's joy, 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 joy. Oh! 
excited. They wanted to bring down the wall of Jericho. Jericho is about to fall. It's Shabbat. Somebody is about to Shabbat. You want to bring Jericho down? to put the devil to shame we are about to use your testimony to prove the veracity of scriptures that what we teach are not stories they are real and so you check your body now you discover there's been a change there was a pain on the back there was a pain on the neck it's gone there was a growth it's gone there was a bone dislocation it's healed there was weakness there's strength you want to rush to the front quickly we may not take all the testimonies but we just want to look at you and dance and say shame on satan please run to the front to the right here you have noticed something something has happened quickly 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 we have just 10 more minutes you have noticed the change don't hesitate quickly 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 why they are coming up jehovah Surgery. You did a surgery? Yes, pile. Oh, of pile? Yes. It's in, yes. It's in death. For how long? That's four years ago. Four years ago? That's after the pile. A lot of things go, go wrong. And well, since that time. So what happened I, now? If I sit down, I, I have to bend. You I, couldn't sit down I, since that time? I, I could not. I'm not comfortable. But what happened now? I'm, I, I, I sat. See what you done for me. See how you set me free. Hey. You are the Since, since December, I've been managing it to drive, but each time I drive, I'm always in pain. With what me. happened now? Then two weeks ago, 
both legs were affected. That even if I press it myself, I, I feel this sharp pain. But now, as we were dancing, I was eating myself and everything that wants to paralyze you, it goes back to hell. It goes back to hell. <laughs> Yes, I'll be bleeding blood, cough, cough, even when I was sitting there, I was coughing. I'll go to the toilet more than three times. So what happened now? He just left. It just left. It just left. That's how that crisis, we just leave. That calamity, we just leave. That affliction, we just leave. That stagnation, we just leave. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Some days I've been feeling this pain at my back. And when you give them um, the testimony about the woman with cancer, instantly left. I just felt the pain disappear. It left. And I want to give God the praise. What happened, brother? Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I've been discovered this uh, this neck pain in some a week ago. Sometimes you were the one by the right? Yes, used to happen to me once a while like this. But today I discover it again when I come here. And I sit down, I couldn't look back. I say, uh, uh, what is happening? What happened now? And now, when you say that we should speak in tongue, I started speaking in tongue. This pain, the, the pain dissipated. The Come on, give the Lord a shout. What happened, brother? In 2020, I went to play football and somebody pushed me. So I landed on my Yes, I landed on my back. So the entire field was quiet. And since then, I've been feeling pain in my back. So while we were singing and dancing, I was feeling this bony sensation, and right now it's all gone. The pain is gone. What happened, brother? Praise God. Um, all through 2020 and into 2021, I, I don't know where it came from, my right arm. I couldn't twist it. I couldn't touch my back. I couldn't touch my back before. I couldn't, but now I it's, gone. it's gone. Somebody give the Lord a shout! Hey! Shout Lord! I want to thank God for what God did to me this evening. I've been having um, pain in my chest since when I was in school. And right now, when they said you should dance, I jumped up. The thing just do boom, and everything went out. <laughs> Father, thank you, Father. For those of you here who had a growth, which of you had a growth that was dealt with? You had a growth somewhere. Is there anybody here like that? Amongst all of you that came out, is there anybody that a growth left your body? Maybe a growth somewhere in your body. You? What, what, what was there? Abdominal pain whenever I pray hard. But while praying, the pain moved from the abdomen from the abdomen side to the middle side of my could you chest. Feel it there? Yes, I could feel it moving. Was there something inside? Yes, sir. Like like a stone form moving from my yes. abdominal side to the middle part of my intestine here. Then immediately the thing left me. 
Just lift your hands toward heaven. I want to keep to time. Tomorrow I will, I will teach. The word of the Lord came forth already. I just wanted us to, to stir the river of joy and to receive of the Lord. Every testimony you've come forward to share, it's established in the name of Jesus. And it is permanent in the name of Jesus. I speak over you. The hand of God will rest upon you today. And the impact of the hand of God will be palpable. As you step out of your house to your workplaces, to your offices, to your businesses, the supernatural dimension of your spirit will begin to affect the natural dimension. You will not struggle to explain your God. By signs and by wonders, you will explain your God to your world. In the name of Jesus, I decree over you today, doors that were shut before you, they are not just opening, they are breaking open. In the name of 